It's just been like a nightmare ever since, you know, just just the fact that I'm even talking about it. It's weird to me that this is real, you know, like this really I'm not just telling some story that I read online or this literally happened. two, three in the morning. And this neighborhood is really quiet. You know, there's a lot of kids that live here. There's a lot of families that live here. So when someone brushed up against me, I screamed like or shrieked or something. And so I said, are you okay? And he turned around and he basically barked at me and told me to mind my fucking business, you Dyke. I told him to watch his mouth and then he shoved me. I told him not to touch me and then he started to attack me. He grabbed me by my hair, he started punching me in the face. Um, and he wouldn't let me go. He, like, we kept yelling at him to leave me alone and that he didn't need to do that. And then towards the end of it, he yells out that he was a cop. I moved to New York about five years ago to pursue a career in journalism, film. And so I decided to um, get with my best friend and start shooting things. Shooting a documentary on the Trayvon Martin case, the verdict came out um, and we all kind of just like froze, like I can't believe this is happening. And my best friend wrote it out like we're not free. You know, you, you think that if you do the right things and you follow the law and you pay your taxes, you do what you're supposed to do, um, you're allowed all the freedoms that everybody else is allowed. Um, but really, you're not. Only certain people are allowed that. My girlfriend asked him to show us his badge and he never did. And then before I knew it, I was being slammed on the ground and put placed into handcuffs and dragged to the precinct. Like my jaw dropped. I was like completely shocked because everybody thought that they were gonna release me, you know. I originally had painted, I used a marker board paint, which I thought worked. Um, <clears throat> and then we wrote this out and then we tried to erase it and realized that uh, it, it actually is permanent now. So I decided to just leave it up as like a decoration. And then when I came back, I, that was like the first thing that I saw walking back into my house. Yeah, I turned on the lights and, and I turned around and I saw that. And um, my friends actually came with me and they saw it too. And we all kind of stood here and just looked at it. And it was just like quiet for a good like minute. You know, this was already here. And then I went through something like that. Now it feels like I get what she was saying. You know, that night I was doing nothing wrong. I wasn't breaking any law. And I still ended up in, in one of the worst jails in America and um, for something that I didn't do. So it makes me wonder if there's the, it, this freedom that people talk about, like what is, is that even real here? Like, and who, who's the one that actually gets that privilege? So yeah, that, that's definitely been like haunting me a lot, you know? And always seeing this in my face, you know, every day. It's just a reminder. I can't really take it off anymore. <laughs> now it's, it's not the same project that I had thought it was gonna be. It's a little different now. It's a little more personal for me. You know, before it was just me telling a story. Now it's like, it's me living the story that I'm telling, so because I'm just one person out of God knows how many.
I see things through a completely different lens now, you know. I can't see them the same anymore. They're not just stories anymore. It's not just a headline. This is a real thing that's happening, you know, and it could very well happen to anybody.